Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us Coast to Coast This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. New from author Margaret Churchill, My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard, the true life adventure of a raccoon mother who suddenly gave birth in an Ottawa, Canada home basement. The book takes us through what Margaret learned about raccoons in general and how her respect and admiration for the mother grew into a trusting and fun-loving adventure with her six babies. Margaret is a Canadian animal Reiki master living in Ottawa, Canada with her husband and four cats, one feral. She received her master's degree in 2002, July of that year. Reiki is a term for universal energy and is based on Japanese Reiki techniques. Recently retired from an Ottawa-based promotional marketing company, she's written articles for numerous publications. Her love of nature and all animals began at an early age. Giving back to animals has become her passion. Margaret Churchill, author of My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard, joining us on This Week in America. Margaret, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you very much, Rick. Good afternoon. I love this book. What a charming book. It's very well illustrated. We'll give you information on where to get the book as we go through the program. This basically is a true story, as I say, and it started with a trip to the compost bin. That's correct. That's correct. I was um, I was throwing out some scraps, and as soon as I opened the lid, uh, there was a little face looking back at me. <laughs> and I was quite shocked, as you can imagine. So I turned the bin over on its side. I said, what are you doing in there? And this uh, mother raccoon came out of the bin, and it was very close to our uh, cat door. So she made her way through the cat door and went directly into our basement. So you can imagine, we were just uh, a little stunned and like, oh, no, 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 you're not supposed to be there. And we went to chase her out. Well, it's interesting because what you put out some chicken wire, your husband puts up some chicken wire. It's yes. quiet there for a while, and you're thinking she's probably left, and she's, then you realize, no, she's still she's still with us. She's still with us, and she <laughs> did uh, actually come back. We did, um, uh, after you had put up the chicken wire, she did come back, and raccoons are quite strong, as you can imagine, so she had pulled apart the chicken wire and crawled right through. And uh, at that point, she uh, changed her location and she ended up in the furnace room. And we have a fake wall uh, on the other side of the furnace room. And she crawled in there and then was very quiet. And we had thought she had left until the next day uh, when we had heard, we were in the living room and we heard some chirping through the floor. And we thought, oh, oh my goodness. She <laughs> What are we going to do? Yeah. Yeah, and you heard a lot of chirping, so you knew that, that, that something was up. You know, it, it's Absolutely. interesting. Situations like this sometimes don't end out well. And you ended up uh, providing a, a loving home for the raccoon and, and for her babies. Talk about the decision. And I, with your background, I'm sure this was the only decision for you. We need to re respect what you just went through and, and, the, and the babies. Exactly, exactly. And, and as it turned out, it was a wonderful experience. But she, she would come upstairs. Um, and of course, uh, when you come upstairs, we have, a, we have another door that's got another cat door in it. And she had been um, taking some of our cat's food uh, that was on the floor there, you know, like in the, in the kitchen and whatever. And uh, so I decided, uh, no, she should have her own food. So uh, we, uh, I bought uh, some kitten kibble and brought it down to her and she always had water, and it got to a point that she was uh, like a dog because she would come up to us in the in the uh, early morning looking for food, and I'd say, okay, Mom, I got your food. Come on, let's go downstairs, and she would run down ahead of me and keep looking back at me to make sure I was coming, and then when we got into the basement, we have two sofas that are on uh sort of kitty corner to each other and she would hide behind the sofa until I put the food down and then she would come out and eat and then so I just started talking to her and uh, we developed a, an incredible bond it was just amazing so yeah, it's fascinating as I'm reading my raccoon family adventures in my backyard by Margaret Churchill our guest on the program there's this relationship that you develop there's this great scene in there where you're out back sitting back reading and she hops up in the chair next to you like I, I think I'm going to hang out with you for a little bit she did. She did. And to me, actually, Rick, that was that was a pretty magical moment because I knew she wasn't hungry because we had been feeding her at this time because she had all these 
these little babies. And uh, raccoons usually don't venture out during the day, but periodically you will see them. They're actually nocturnal animals. And she indeed came. Uh, she she indeed came out while I was sitting out in the backyard one Saturday, reading a book, drinking my coffee, and she came out with a little one, and just sat by me and just kind of looked up at me, and we had this little conversation. And all I got from her was, "Oh my goodness, it's so hard hurting all these little babies at the same time." <laughs> And so she she must have hung out there. She hung out there, I think, for about 15 or 20 minutes. And so we had our little chat, and then she went back into the house with the baby. It was pretty incredible. <laughs> the book we're talking about is My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard by Margaret Churchill. This is a republished book now available for sale in ebook and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale at uh, all Amazon sites at Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press and Media Direct Orders, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a lot more. Margaret's website is authormargaretchurchill.com, and you can link on directly to that by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. The book, as I mentioned, it is so well written uh, beautiful illustration. You get a great website. When you go, you'll, you'll find out information on the book there as well. When did you decide, I need to like make a book out of this adventure, share the story with other people? Oh, okay. Actually, this started, uh, it was actually back in August of uh, 2017. And what I was doing, I didn't realize we were going to have the, um, the uh, raccoons for about four months, but we did, because that's actually the gestation time or whatever, and then they get big enough and then they leave the house. Um, I started blogging it to all my friends, and I started to talk like a raccoon might talk, like what he would say if he was human. You know, like how, how they do that in kids' books, yes, where they, they give the animal um, a human voice. Well, I started to do that. And they started laughing and sending me back comments. And then eventually they said, you know what, you should write a kid's book on this because it's very clever the way you write. And I've never written before, so I knew nothing about how to start and where to go and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it was, really, it, it was really a learning experience. But I, I just sort of got a big yes, yes, I think kids out there need to, need to learn about this. And so that was my intention is to is to teach the young kids how to deal with uh, wild animals when you see them. They're not puppies, they're not kittens. Um, you can't go up and you know give them a hug or anything like that because they're wild animals and we tend to forget that sometimes. Yeah, they're so cute and adorable. You think, okay, this is a pet. And as you point out, that there really isn't a pet and you need to give them space. How difficult yeah. was that in the beginning for you to understand? We need to uh, give them space. I mean, they're just tiny little animals. And, and, and at that point, it'd be, I, I would think, pretty tempting to go up and, and to try to get close to them. Oh, yes, it would be. It would be. Uh, but the babies are quite small when they're born, and they didn't actually really come out behind the wall until they were getting a little bigger. So we really kind of saw them uh, probably maybe after two months or, or whatever when they came out, to, uh, two to three months probably. Um, we developed a routine, which was really kind of surprising because these were the best babies in the world. I just couldn't believe it. They would sleep during the day and then at night they would get hungry and of course that's when mom would come up to visit and say you know i need some more food kind of thing and then she'd she'd eat and go back and then look <laughs> after them so after a while it just became routine we knew when they were sleeping we knew when they were awake we knew when they wanted to be fed and i just kind of worked around their schedule that way always being sure to keep uh keep my distance uh but talk to them talk to them nonstop because they would get used to your voice and get used to you and vice versa. A sad part of the book for me comes on, on June 1st when, when they move out. And I know you saw this coming. Probably in the beginning, you're thinking, I wonder how long they're going to be here, that I'm sure there was this period of attachment because they were with you for quite some time. Moved yes. out on June the 1st. The last meeting was, was later in the month. But they still come back from time to time. They still come and check in. They do. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, less, less so now less so now, but there was a, a, a small little uh, baby um, there that I, I believe was a female. Apparently you can't uh, tell, I did, I did check on this, but she seemed, to be, um, she seemed to be a little 
different than the rest. So I just assumed that maybe she was probably a female. She wasn't. The others I found, uh, the babies, they would, they'd love to play with each other, you know, hide behind pillows and play hide and seek and topple each other. And, but she seemed to be a little bit off on her own. Now, she came back uh, when she got quite big, actually. And um, she came back in January and February of this year. Now, at that time, we had moved their feeding out into uh, the garage. Uh, we have a, a, a thing called a breezeway, which kind of connects, um, it's it's kind of a hallway between the, the the house and the garage, yes. and that's where she uh, where she came. So she would come come back the odd time, and the reason I know it was her, you, you tend to get, uh, when the animals stay with you for as long as they do, you tend to recognize them. So if they would come around, I would know if, oh yeah, that was one of ours, or no, that's a different one, which we did have one on occasion who, who who was quite uh, quite different so we knew oh okay she or that one doesn't really recognize us but um, she was uh, she was pretty amazing and as soon as I put the bowl of food down she ran right to it and she was with another raccoon at the time who stood back and actually growled and of course uh, raccoons will growl as a warning and I did get this from from mum the odd time when I would come between her and her babies not intentionally but when I was putting food down for them so I understood the warning growl and you just stand back and go okay I'm not here to hurt you you know this is for yes. you stand back or leave completely which is what what I did I mentioned for me as a reader that was sad because it's like they're ready. I, I guess deep down they wanted you to take the spare bedroom and convert it so they had a place to get a you know TV cable, the whole thing, and they yeah. could they could hang out there. Now I know that that's not going to happen. What was it like for you when you realized okay they're moving on out? It, it was bittersweet actually. Um, uh, you know, in the beginning you're thinking you're you're a little concerned because. You're afraid of them, um, you know, going out and getting hit by a car or something like that. Uh, but we were told because she had six babies that she was an experienced mom, which meant that she knew the territory. And she did. And and raccoons, I learned, have up to five dens. So they have other homes that they go to. It's not necessarily your home. But it was very bittersweet for me. I'll, I'll be honest, Rick, I did miss them. Uh, it was nice to have them around. They were They were just a hoot. It was so much fun. What was this experience like for you and, and the family? And your cats even adapted to the uh, to, to having some uh, some visitors there. What was this? What was this like for you? Oh it, well, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. Yes, actually, the cats were afraid of them, so they would stay away from them, except for uh, Dutch, our our eldest cat, who um, who was approached by a little baby who who started to growl and try and act really fierce in front of him. It was really quite humorous to watch because Dutch just stared at him and, uh, and the little guy ran away afterwards. But actually it was really kind of interesting to watch how, how they interacted with each other because the raccoons really just ignored them. They knew they were there. They, they didn't feel threatened at all. And some people I know in the past have believed that raccoons will attack cats. Uh, we never found that at all. I think our, our cats were very mindful of them and would keep their distance. The book we're talking about is My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard by Margaret Churchill. Her website is authormargaretchurchill.com. The book's available at uh, Page Turner Press and Media. The website is pageturner.us. I'll go through the whole list of where the book's available here uh, here shortly. I mentioned I really like the book. I have a feeling seniors, not quite your target audience for this. No. This is designed for, for younger kids, and they'll really learn something from this. They get a very touching story and, uh, and a lesson in the importance of this and Animal human bond, won't they? Yes, yes, that is uh, that's actually my intention, Rick. Um, it's unfortunate, but a, a lot of people who don't understand animals uh, become very fearful of them, and and they tend to, you know, call the pest control or or someone to relocate them. And and actually, if you ro relocate a, a wild animal, that can be very damaging to them because even though you think you're doing a good thing by like maybe putting them in a park or a forest. That's not their home. They've they've developed a sense of the area of where they are or where they where they were actually, and to take them out of that can be very detrimental to them. And they try and find their way back home uh, to their original place, and uh, and usually that's where they can, you know, 
get into trouble. Yes. Well, uh, I mean, I, yeah, so go, go yeah, ahead. I was just going to say, I, I mentioned that situations like this can end up with disastrous results, and they didn't because you understood that, and that's an, an important message you just said to people, that uh, right. you know, you call and you take them off and you think maybe you're doing the right thing and, and you really haven't. So you should talk to, to an expert before you get involved in that. Absolutely. And uh, the best experts I've found were uh, the wildlife centers. So uh, to your to your listeners, I would suggest you call a wildlife center if you happen to have a, um, a wild animal on your property and you, and you don't know what to do because they are just a wealth of information, as I found with, with the Ottawa Wildlife Center here. A couple minutes left in the program. I mentioned the beginning of love of nature. Animals began for you at an early age. When and why did you get this fascination with animals? Um, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I think it could have started uh, when I was just a baby. My uh, grandfather up at our cottage, uh, we, um, we have a cottage on an island, so that was kind of nice. And uh, he introduced a crow to us, a crow that he said had fallen out of a... Um, had fallen out of a tree and so this crow would follow us everywhere and so I was as a as a child I was just fascinated with this crow and so today I have a love of crows as well uh, because I could learn so much from this uh, from this crow talk to him you know that sort of thing but I think it started at a very very early age for me and I've always found them extremely inspiring uh, I find them awesome quite honestly and uh, and, and so I'm, I'm very, very drawn to them, very, very drawn to animals because of that. I yeah. think we can learn a lot. Well, we can, and that comes across in the book. The book we're talking about, once again, My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard by Margaret Churchill. A charming book, beautifully illustrated, beautifully written. This is a republished book, now available for sale in eBay and paperback at its lowest retail price. Available for sale at all Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner Press, and Media Direct Orders. Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a lot more. Information at uh, Margaret's website, which is authormargaretchurchill.com. And you can link on uh, directly to Margaret's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Mention Page Turner. That, uh, the book is available at their website as well. Talk about your experience with them in getting this book, getting it together, getting it published, and looking as great as it does. Absolutely incredible. I have so much respect for this company, and I'm just thrilled uh, with the, their professionalism and what they produced. Uh, when I decided I wanted to do an illustration, um, I thought it was going to be a little expensive for me, so I tried to look locally for an illustrator to do it uh, and, um, and had no luck there. So uh, they came back to me and said, look, we'll we'll give you a break we'll do it for for half the price and i said absolutely go ahead and i am just thrilled with what they've produced their illustrations are perfect they were exactly what i was looking for so i have i have so many compliments to give uh, page finder they are professional they uh um they look after you in so many ways but they keep in touch with you at all times so even when they were doing the website for instance uh, if they said it was going to be up in a, a week and and if they needed a few more days they would call you just to give you an update they are always always looking out for your best interests and and I've been thrilled uh, I can honestly tell you I've talked to a couple of people who have Canadian publishers do their books and they've been extremely disappointed a lack of professionalism lack of motivation on their part but Paige Turner has been absolutely amazing. I can't say enough about the company. I'm just thrilled. Well, and the uh, the end result is a beautiful book. A great website as well. I mentioned that before. So often you go and it's uh, jumbled and you really can't find anything. It's laid out. It's very attractive. I'm not the sharpest when it comes to technology, and I can understand it and appreciate it. it it's, it's very impressive. The book, once again, is My Raccoon Family, Adventures in My Backyard by Margaret Churchill. Her website, authormargaretchurchill.com. You'll find it at pageturner.us.com as well. Link on directly to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Margaret, it was fun having a chance to read the book and having the opportunity to let you share it with uh, the viewers and listeners to today's program. Thank you for being with us. 
My pleasure, Rick. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. You're welcome. You're listening to This Week in America. You'll find us online at thisweekinamerica.us.